Hey guys, so I've been working on a project called Spectra. It's a real-time SDF path tracer uh, that's uh, denoised. So uh, it's a pretty neat application. I'm going to share it with you guys. Um, the whole purpose of this is just uh, sometimes I want to play around with SDFs. I want to invent new shapes with SDFs. Now the problem is every time I want to do that, I either have to go to Shader Toy or use my own shader tools, uh, but then I have to rewrite my ray marching loop and my lighting code every single time I make a new shader. And that's quite cumbersome if I just want to deal with the SDF itself. So I wrote this tool that basically acts as the, the rendering engine part for your shader. Uh, just You just have to plug in your SDF, it can show your real-time path trace uh, interactive uh, view, viewport some some sort of so um, a little bit of a motivation um, so that's thing one I want to prototype SDFs fast uh, thing two is that I want to play with path tracing uh, I don't have an RTX card so I, I can't go full real time on the uh, real polygon meshes um, the only thing that's fast enough is SDF I can path trace so I'm, I'm playing around with um, SDF and this is sort of the experiment, uh, the outcome of the experiment of playing around with path tracing SDFs. So uh, this is a pretty neat tool. Let me just get into how you can use it. Um, so why don't we go to uh, just start running the application. So you see a uh, it's a blue, blue sky and the, just the plane. Now let me explain how this works. So basically you run Spectra. Um, it comes with a bunch of source code and in, in the source code file there's this scene.hlsl file. It's a, it's a shader file that it reads. Uh, what, what this does is while the application is running, uh, each, each frame it checks if you edit the file. If the file has been edited, it will hot load the new code. So basically as, as a, this is sort of the, the, the the loop of creating an SDF, you just typing some code, you save, and automatically this will show you the changes. Now, um, so these are the three definitions you need to create to make this work. A map function is just a sign distance field, it takes the position and returns the distance. And uh, as you see defined here, also a material index, which later, after the ray march is ended, the index is passed to a map material function which you also define to generate a material of this definition. And the third function is the environment function, which just returns the skylight or the environment light based on the right direction and time. Uh, the reason this, uh, the reason the application is showing anything at all without having these functions defined is because of the demo the HLSL included, which the definition is inside. So. Uh, this is a file sort of prepared for this demo, so I'm going to go straight into it. Um, this is a pretty straightforward SDF for floor. And material is just albedo 0.5, and then nothing particularly interesting. So why don't I show you uh, adding an object there. So, you know, the sphere is kind of the classic, simplest SDF besides the floor. So if I do that, it gives us a sphere. So you can see it's immediately path traced. Uh, you don't see any of the noise, as maybe I've mentioned it before, but uh, it also, uh, besides the path tracer, it also has a full path tracing denoiser after that, which cleans up the noise quite a bit. So you can see this looks quite nice and be an occlusion instantly without you having to do anything. All you have to do is define the geometry of material. So um, in fact, uh, because I haven't mapped the material index of one, to anything, uh, it's sort of defaulting to albedo of 0 0.9. So why don't we uh, have uh, make this into some kind of color? So say red. See, so, uh, it, yeah, the changes are instantaneous. And in fact, I guess I have to explain what bind is. So bind is just a convenient macro, uh, as you can see defined here. What it does is that it uh, it compares the distances of different objects. It picks the closest distance and it picks the material index of the closest distance and return those so that the ray march can accurately determine what object it's hit and how far it has been from the ray origin. Now, uh, this is not particularly interesting, so 
The, re the really powerful part is that you can define materials that have emissive properties. So uh, if you go to light, say let's just make a separate sphere. Say the training is two. Uh, it's just two two spheres overlapping, not not too interesting. So let's over uh, offset it by a little bit. So two. Um, so before I do anything, you can see this nice red tint, uh, this sort of global illumination interreflection between the two spheres, which is automatic because of the path tracing system. Uh, let me lift up the sphere a little bit. Cool. Now um, what I want to do is so remove the skylight instead I introduce the, the light as the light source so to do that all I have to do is change the emission value of the uh, in, true index 2 which corresponds to our light geometry so save you can see immediately you can, you can, uh, that the lighting just works it's a little stronger yeah so you can see a very nice soft shadow right you know, all thanks to this path tracing, and the image is relatively clean due to effects of the denoiser. Of course, uh, there's some boiling, so one limitation of this version of Spectra is there's no uh, next event estimation to help with the uh, sampling variance because, as I said, as I said, the geometry, I mean, the emissions are procedurally defined, um, which means that you don't have a uniform uh, surface for the emissive, emissive uh, uh, objects that you can uniformly sample for the next event estimation which makes it quite hard to to kind of kind of do this but uh, uh, we already have a lot of that implemented so the order looks quite nice uh, these are sort of the next thing to tackle uh, on a to-do list i would say so uh, another thing is that you can see how time passed in to these functions uh, that means we can even animate the light source like so you can see it gets uh, dynamically updated and uh, nice smooth animation and the lighting changes instantaneously a uh, nice uh, light bouncing back to the sphere from the floor and nice soft shadow that's physically correct so this is pretty nice. Uh, it's the, it's the, it's the. This is so this the, so that that was the live demo part. Uh, why don't I show you some of the other scenes? So Sphere Two is just the same thing. Uh, so uh, Cornell box, of course. Once you have a path tracer, you got to put Cornell box in there. So here's Cornell box. Got a little bit of artifact and boiling due to the uh, sampling of variance. Um, again, for a relatively small light source, um, we don't have next event ad estimation, so we kind of have to deal with the noise for now. Um, so this coin out box, you can see it works quite well for uh, inter-reflection on the surfaces. The next is uh, Tron, which is just a bunch of spheres that are infinitely laid out. Um, here we, we're, we're, we're conveniently using the uh, modulate operator. So in a sand distance field context, that means we're repeating the space itself. Um, we can do this infinitely, which uh, results in an infinite number of spheres. It's a nice, it's a nice property of a sand distance field. So now I move my camera way off. Let me just go back, since the uh, the following scenes sort of need that. Okay. Box. Uh, so it's just an empty room with some cool lighting, some some weird object in, in the middle. Um, you can see a uh, stripe light, nice interreflected uh, light here. Very nice. And uh, the last one is interior. It's so it's a shader I had on the shader toy. I just pointed it to this engine. So beforehand, uh, before I share it away, if I want to have some kind of nice imagery like this, I need to wait for the noise to go away. Probably want to wait for like a thousand frames, two thousand frames, except here it's uh, near instantaneous. 
have this uh, have this nice cleaned up image, uh, except uh, at the cost of uh, some detail being lost. But that's uh, that's fine for the purpose of uh, rapid SDF prototyping. So this is the gist of this engine. Let me just make some live updates to show you. Say, uh, let me let me see. It's been a while. So table, if want to change this color, say do to blue. Something like that. So it's a big SDF. It takes a while to compile. Okay, so now 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 the table is blue. Switch it back. You can see the the edits are quite fast, and uh, all you have to do is define the geometry and material. So this is uh, Spectra, and uh, if you're interested, you can go on to my GitHub page of Spectra. Um, right now it's private, but I'll, I'll make it public in a second. Uh, there's a usage guide for everything, the example screenshots, uh, and uh, if you're interested in a the code, there is the code for uh, everything, including the denoiser and the path tracer. So yeah.